construction notices, which are displayed in the assembly stations and other passenger areas on board. These notices include the location of assembly stations, that is, areas where passengers should assemble in the event of an emergency, the method of donning a life jacket, and the description of the general emergency alarm signal. The signal consists of seven or more short blasts, followed by a single long blast on the ship's whistle, and is followed by a similar signal on the alarm bells. If the signal is sounded, you should proceed to the nearest assembly station if you're not already in an assembly station. The assembly stations on Stena Superfast 8 are located as follows. Assembly Station A, Taste Restaurant, Deck 7 Midships. Assembly Station B, Starboard Boat Deck, Deck 7 Aft. Assembly Station C, Port Boat Deck, Deck 7 Aft. Assembly Station D, Barista and Stena Plus, Deck 8 Forward. Assembly Station A, Taste Restaurant, which is located on Deck 7, is designated as the assembly station for passengers who require assistance, including those with reduced mobility. Please ask a member of staff for assistance in the event of an incident. Assembly stations can be identified by a square, green and white sign with arrows in each corner depicting a family group. At an assembly station, a crew member will issue you with a life jacket and instruct you on how it is to be worn. You should remain calm and follow instructions from the crew member in your nearest assembly station. Thank you for your attention. in the pit. I feel sweet. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you. 
Sleep on my and I bet I'm stand you like that. That's you be standing here for my future. Take off the idea of oppression. Take off the idea of oppression. Take off the idea of oppression. Of course, hmm, it looks like. Hmm, let's see. And now we put let's football on the TV. Light mail him. What am I?
Oh. Oh. My tongue. Hey, what is no single?
to move away. You are reminded that smoking is not permitted on the card deck, and the use of matches or any other naked light is strictly prohibited. Disembarkation of all foot passengers will be taking place shortly, by way of the passenger gangway situated on deck 7 adjacent to the guest services desk. However, could I ask all foot passengers to please remain seated until a further announcement is made. I would like to advise passengers that all items of baggage left in Loch Ryan Port may be reclaimed before passing through security in the baggage reclaim area. Once again, we would like to thank you for choosing to sail with Stenoline and wish you a safe and pleasant onward journey. Thank you. As we approach a berth in Belfast, can I ask all foot passengers to remain seated within the accommodation, keeping accesses to lifts and stairwells clear, to allow your fellow passengers access to the car deck. This will help speed up the disembarkation process for everyone. Thank you. choosing to sail with Stenoline. It has been our pleasure to have been of service to you today. Would all vehicle drivers and your passengers please rejoin your vehicles on the car deck now. Drivers are requested not to start your engines until instructed to do so, or until the traffic in front of you begins to move away. You are reminded that smoking is not permitted on the car deck and the use of matches or any other naked light is strictly prohibited. Disembarkation of all foot passengers will be taking place shortly, by way of the passenger gangway situated on deck 7 adjacent to the guest services desk. However, could I ask all foot passengers to please remain seated until a further announcement is made. I would like to advise passengers that all items of baggage left in Loch Ryan Port may be reclaimed before passing through security in the baggage reclaim area. Once again, we would like to thank you for choosing to sail with Stenoline and wish you a safe and pleasant onward journey. Thank you.
excuse me, do you know where the reclaimed baggage area is? I don't know. Oh. Oh. of a pop star disposed. <laughs> <laughs>
to take us back and cruise us out to embark on another for tip and run raid. While I would prefer to move the entire high seas fleet out to a more decisive encounter, at least this is a beginning. With that more meteor van, his battle cruiser's active is great. It's my intention to lure the enemy into the full force of our battleships already out of sight, 50 miles behind. Not touch or No, we like that. Ha oh, ha! Uh, we're eating breakfast! Ha! Oh.
the engine! Now, what's the of this cargo ship? How do you see? Ah, no, it's all in the first two of used to be a third used to be up here. That was If you're Irish and make the father, that's a work well filled for you. And you have the name, miss, down this part. As long as you should marvel if it's a martyr gone the match. I see you, Red Light. Now, 
Let's see what what I am Mr. for cargo ship. This still up your your face your face face makes me your face 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 Pulling us to the first. Will it go? Can it go on? Is it going towards the golf? Is it not? Perhaps that's. Stand up, no, you don't. Get on the first track and it will take you to the golf. Take you down to the beach. Can you. Oh, I'm so confused. Can you take me down to where those donkeys go on the beach? Yes, sir. That's great. Hello, Michael. Nice job, you guys. Can you do that for you, Annika? Oh, you're going to have to look at hundreds of donkeys. Hot donkey! Oh, God, Oh, ow! Can Rocky go a bit faster? Oh. Shit! Ah, me! Shut down. Oh, don't be open. Oh, don't be open. Yeah, but then you are not bad. You're the captain called my. But power out! So I did your eyes to be a freaking. But the power's not even gone in. Ah! With me, you must still know what you're finding. I think it's spot the river for your turn. I'll meet you out your shadow. Come on tight, I spear. It's my spear, a slippy one. Oh, holy macaroni! Come on, cork, hurry up. Don't talk to me about take off, not after what happened here. I think. Come along, come along, he puffed. And now without quark. Good, good. Wait! What do you mean, Vilfiofi? What do you mean, Crutch? So stupid toy, my breakfast. Did you see the water? Of course yes. I did. It was more than rushing in, it was falling in. Stupid toy, Crutch. We went back in our boat for a few minutes. Oh, we went back in our boat for a few minutes. I go get it, William. I guess I am a rose to a bet you're right. Clank, where have you been? I thought something happened to you. I was having my sprockets looped. You picked a fine time for a tune up. Where's Courtney Gears? Miss Gears. Has this is the aunt. What? What about Nefarious? Did she tell you where he is? Dr. Nefarious is aboard a star cruiser called the Leviathan. Um, okay. Nice job, Clank. So, I'll just call Sasha and have her track down that star cruiser. Oh, he's still going. 
chance that uh, we have found. Discovery Theta! What the hell are you sneaking? I'll be up him. Where's my vicar? Oh, come on, likes them. Forget it. Stay off course, my welcome aboard. Come, my long he buffed. I'm vicar. Oh, out of him. Stupid, stupid. Hello. Do you have my ticket? Oh, what? Wait for a stop. Now you see me. Uh oh, crap. That is that is the prim, the Belfast, Northern Ireland. And there is This is a Belgian Mr. Mellon from the Philippines from the BBC. The BBC are slowly led up where they love him. What? I have um, I have forgotten it. Oh you see. Oh, I don't like it. I don't like it. I am um, um, Movie House Cinemas. What do you mean? 
Oh, aïe. Il n'y a pas moyen que quelqu'un regarde avec moi. Ouais, bah, j'ai pas vu le film. Euh... Oh, tiens, oui, Lynn. Eglinton were two local hostelries and we were warned as students not to waste our time there. So just one of my memories of a long, long time ago. I didn't waste my time there, but uh, Eglinton Avenue. And the next stop is the Balloon Ledge Hotel. A lot of these buildings are occupied by students and young professionals, and other buildings are occupied by visitors that are created as guest houses or self-catering companies. The Dublin uh, takes two hours to do by railway track. GIs that were based here during the Second World War. We had thousands of American soldiers here in 1942, and they came to train in Northern Ireland to go into Europe and fight in the Second World War. And the GIs who stayed here thought this looked like a village. They called it a village, and so the name has stuck ever since. I'm not sure that we think it's a village now it is, but perhaps in those times it looked more like that. It's hard to say what it was like in the past. Yeah, we had lots of American soldiers here, and some of them married local girls. And uh, because the Americans were very um, desirable, they were very well dressed, they were very confident. American Eagle was very positive, they can do it. They brought things such as chewing gum, they'd never seen chewing gum before. They brought Coca-Cola, we'd never seen the Coca-Cola. So our girls were swept off their feet by these GIs, and some of them married them, much to the annoyance of local boys who lost their girls, but that's love, you in the trouble St. James's Park. And after that, nine other young men died in prison in, in Belfast. Very sad part of our history. On the left is the uh, Conway Street, the mill, Conway Mill, the old linen mill of Belfast. the International War Mules. This is our next stop for the International War Mules. This is number 19. Stop number 19. Then we're going to turn left and drive alongside this wall. Protestant community 
opportunity. And this wall is here to suit both sides because both sides distrust the other side. This work now you see on the left is all new. It's only gone up um, in the last week and they're still working on it. So that's a vast improvement from what was there beforehand. These are various walls around the world. There's a wall in Israel, obviously, and uh, some other parts of the world. And work is going on, as you'll see, to put up these new murals here on this wall. People do guides for the area, uh, guiding um, people who live here in West Belfast and um, they're tourists done of the nationalist area, tourists done by people in the royalist area and they both sides feel very strongly about themselves and against the other one road so uh, we would have referred to it sometimes as Fleet Street. Newsletter is the oldest English language newspaper in the world and that's still published in Belfast on another site. Building in the left side, part of the Ulster University coming to Belfast. And uh, you've got the um, cathedral on your left hand side. Belfast Cathedral, St. Anne's. And that's the library on the right hand side. Cinema. the sandbank and the sandbank was removed in 1776 but the name remains and was anglicised to Belfast. That's the Albert Memorial Park on our left hand side and that was built in 1969. Thanks to the people of Belfast who put their hands in their pockets they gave uh, donations. There's a bit of filming going on on the left hand side. Girl with the fancy tape, I don't know what's going on there. There's always something going on in Belfast, of course, and this is our stop number two for the Customs House Square. Okay, so the Al Albert Memorial Clock, of course. And this structure on the left hand side, the lag and weir, it cleaned up the building, or it cleaned up the, the river, and of course it made the water levels more able for the, it stopped uh, things like smelly mud flaps being exposed and basically improved the river and it meant that salmon came to the river to spawn and breed and this was why we built the salmon of knowledge <coughs> up over there on the other side of the river. Now we crossed over the river in shapes from County Antrim to County Down and this is a Titanic quarter right now. It's one of the many quarters of Belfast. We have seven quarters in Belfast and we'll see all of them on our trip. Now when I say quarters of Belfast, I don't mean fractions. I mean areas of interest. And this quarter started in the year 2000 as part of a millennium project to regenerate the area. And the Odyssey Pavilion was the first building built in December 2000. It opened with the W5 Sand Centre. And it features a public street cinema and a 10-pin bowling alley. 
Other than that, not set here, we've got the SSC Arena, which is a concert arena. The singer Khalid is playing tonight. I've never heard of him either. But apparently he's a big deal, as you can see, by all these coaches for his band and his equipment. And uh, he's playing there tonight at the SSC Arena. This is stop number three for the SSC Arena. And our stop number four is up next. And that's for the HMS Caroline. So the Titanic port is named after the RMS Titanic, the Royal Mail Steamer Titanic. And this little ship on our left hand side, the SS Nomadic, is part of the Titanic story. When the Titanic came to Cherbourg in France, it took on 400 more passengers. And they were ferried to the Titanic in this little ferry here from the port of Cherbourg, which was too shallow to accommodate the huge Titanic. Passengers such as Nancy Molly Brown and John Jacob Astor when they all uh, they all sailed in that little boat. There's some folks outside Titanic Belfast getting their photograph taken at the big sign. And the outside of the building features 3,000 3, aluminium sheets bent to uh, to look like the waves there. And from above, the building represents a white star. It looks like a white star, and uh, this is to reflect the white star shipping line that uh, the Titanic was built for. And of course, the SS Nomadic is the last survivor of the white star shipping line. Stop number four is up next. On the left there, you'll see Titanic Hotel, and this was once the drawing offices for the shipyard. This is where Titanic was designed. And on the left hand side there, you see the Curtis Rich Park out the boundaries of the Arrow Gantry, where the Olympic and the Titanic were built all those years ago, starting in 1908. It took four years to build and took over three million ribbons to make the Titanic. And we've been building ships in Belfast since 1663. But of course we didn't build this next ship that we're coming to, the HMS Caroline. She was built in Birkenhead near Liverpool. And uh, she was built in 1914. And she joined the, the fleet as they made their way to the Battle of Jutland in December 1916. And off the coast of Denmark, that great battle took place. And over 8,000 sailors lost their lives in the Battle of Jutland. This little boat is the last survivor of that great battle. She came here in 1924 and was used by the Royal Navy as a training vessel. And she's remained here ever since. She's been restored back to her original condition. And it really is a worthwhile tourist attraction to go around. If you're in the Earth maritime history or even just want to see how sailors lived over 100 years ago, this is the place to come to. Stuff number four. Miss Caroline, we have money off vouchers for this attraction to just ask for them at the door. Seven letters that were signed by Adolf Hitler there. Plus other documents. The gold is dates back 800 years. Well, if nobody said it so far, hello and welcome to Belfast. If you don't believe me, you believe the letters on the side of the crane there. Hello and welcome they stand for. Of course that's not really true, that's only a bit of wrong. As we say, uh, you might have a different word for it. But the ancient W stands for Harlem the Rook Shipyard. And Sir Edward Harlem came here in 1861, bought the shipyard from Samuel Hickland, and with his business partner, Gustav Wolf, set up the greatest shipyards in the world. And they built the biggest shipyards and ships in the world. And those cranes arrived in 1969 and 1974. They're called Samson and Goliath. And the shipyard's parent company's gone into receivership. And the men of the shipyard here are hoping that uh, they will get a lifeline thrown to the fucking shipyard by hopefully the uh, Ministry of Defence it is going to award them a contract. Hopefully that's the plan. Anyway.
ladies and gentlemen, on the, on the bus there from uh, California. Are you anywhere near Hollywood? Very, very close to Hollywood. Well, their Hollywood is very different from our Hollywood. Our Hollywood is just up the road. And it's up the road here. But our Hollywood differs in many ways from your Hollywood. One of the ways it differs is our Hollywood is spelt with one L. Hollywood it started off as. And of course, uh, we do have a Hollywood star comes from Hollywood. That's Jimmy Dorn, the actor. And a very special sports super superstar. Rory McElroy comes from Hollywood as well. So we're on the road to Hollywood now. And uh, one of the uh, one of the things that Shipyard's created is on the, the right hand side here, the Oval Stadium. This was paid for by the men of the shipyard. They all paid small donations towards the building of the, of the stadium, the Oval Stadium. And that's where Glen Torn football team play. They get their name from the Glen Torn River, which is nearby. And in 1960, a young fellow called George Best went to try out for the team. He was told to come back when he was a bit taller and a bit more filled out. And he never went back. He was signed up by Manchester United football team, and the rest is history. He went up to Manchester, and two weeks later he came back. He was so homesick, and then Sir Matt Busby, who was the boss of Man United at the time, said that we'll put you in with an ex Irish family, and he settled in Manchester, and played for Manchester United, and also for Northern Ireland, our international team. And he was a really fantastic football player. I saw him play against Iceland in the late 70s, and he was such a fantastic football player. Then every time he scored a goal, even the Icelandic supporters cheered and shouted for him. But it was really the best football player to come from Northern Ireland, and possibly might have been the best in the world. Who knows? Certainly, well, he thought he was. And we have a very special place in our heart for George. And this is why our second airport on the left hand side is called the George Best Airport. A member died in 2005. Over 100,000 people came to his funeral at our next stop, Parliament Buildings, which isn't too far away. Lords won, and the 
Ulster clan chiefs, they left Ireland in what was called the Flight of the Earth in 1607. And three years later, in 1610, King James I, King James II of Scotland, he was also, he said, I want to colonize Northern Ireland with Irish and Scottish settlers. He wanted people who were loyal to him, who had plenty of money, and who were willing to settle in Northern Ireland. And so they settled in the six counties of Northern Ireland, Fermanagh, Antrim, Tyrone, Londonderry, Armagh, and Down. And there had been previous attempts over the years to colonize other parts of Ireland, particularly in the west of Ireland. But this Ulster plantation was very successful, and it explains why Northern Ireland was for many years mostly Unionist or Protestant. In 1801, Ireland became part of the United Kingdom and as such was ruled from London in Westminster by the members of Parliament there. <laughs> but after a number of revolts in Ireland during the 1800s, it was decided to let Ireland try and root itself from an Irish Parliament in Dublin. And a proposal was put through the House of Commons. It didn't get through, it was called the first Home Rule Bill. And basically what they said was let Ireland rule itself from a Parliament in Dublin. The Ulster Unionists up here were livid about it and they revolted against this. There were 30 deaths in Belfast alone because of the riots and the violence that broke out. And then in 1893, a similar bill was tried to go, tried to go through the Parliament, but it didn't go through the House of Lords. But the third Home Rule Bill in 1912 went through and was due to become law in 1914. So the Ulster Unionists were up in arms. Literally, they formed their own army in 1913, called the Ulster Volunteer Force. And this was a group of around 100,000 men who were well armed and well trained. They trained in areas like this that we're passing now. And the Irish people were very worried about this. They said, we don't want this army from the north coming down and shooting all around them. We'll start our own army. And they started the Irish Volunteer Army in November 1913. So it looked as if civil war was inevitable in Ireland at the start of the century. But then the First World War broke out. At first it was thought the First World War would only last a few months. And so both sides, both armies, joined the British Army, thinking they would get a better deal after the war, which we didn't think would last for very long. But it lasted for four years. And at the end of those four years, people were sick and tired of shooting and killing. And so they decided on a compromise they would stop any violence happening in Northern Ireland. Of course this didn't happen. There were 500 deaths between 20, uh, 1921 and 1922 in Belfast alone, and it led to the Civil War in Ireland, and of course the War of Independence in Ireland. So many more deaths followed this compromise. But in 1920, the 4th Home Group Bill was passed, and on the 3rd of May 1921, in Belfast City Hall, King George V came and opened the first Northern Ireland Parliament. Now, Eleven years later, they found a more permanent home for the Parliament, and they settled here at Stormont Estate. This is where we'll find the Parliament buildings. The King was too ill, he had very bad health problems, he was a very heavy smoker. <laughs> this is Prince Edward Drive and it measures exactly one mile from the gates to the steps up there of the building. On the other side of the driveway you'll see these lovely lamps. These are given from the people of Canada and they added a little bush head under each of the lamps there. The trees on each side of the driveway are lime trees. There's 305 of them in the estate. Just look at that law going for straightness. They might have to do that every day. Now, the buildings themselves are, uh, it's actually only one building, but it was built during the Great Depression and they expected to build more buildings. That's why it's called Parliament Buildings instead of Parliament Building. But the six columns at the front represent the six counties of Northern Ireland. 
as do the six floors of the building. And the building measures 365 feet wide and has 365 windows in it. During the Second World War, it was used by the Royal Air Force as a base, and they thought that the white building would stand out like a sore thumb as a target for the Luftwaffe. So they camouflaged it with a mixture of tar and cow manure, and they spread it over the building. It was very easy to get on, but very hard to get off. It soaked into that poor stone, and it took seven years to remove this stinky mixture. And as you can see from the top of the buildings, it still needs a bit of cleaning up there. That was me. And uh, said that even now, inside the building, there's still a smell of cow manure. But then, of course, that's only been part of it this session. <laughs> I haven't had any of those for over two and a half years. Scope <coughs> number six for Parliament buildings. That statue we passed up there was Sir Edward Carson, defiantly facing Dublin, in, in front of the government, which defiantly faced that home rule in, in Dublin. Although, of course, he was born in Dublin, Sir Edward Carson. And he was a Dublin barrister, best known for his work in the Oscar Wilde case, the libel case against the Marquis of Queensbury, which Oscar lost. And we're now at Massey Avenue. Massey Avenue gets its name from William Massey. He was the Prime Minister of New Zealand during the 1920s. And he came from Limba Valley up in County Derry, or County London Derry, if you will. Of course, it's home, Massey Avenue, to the most optimistic family in Belfast, on our right hand side, they have an outdoor unheated swimming pool. Maybe not today's the best day for swimming. I know it's very fashionable in uh, California, you can just dip in the swimming pool. Not so over here in Northern Ireland. It's very cold and damp, and though it's not great for swimming, it's great if you want to grow flax. From flax you get linen. From linen you get the words like uh, lingerie, uh, from the lineup plant where that comes from, the flax plant, uh, you get uh, linseed oil and you can make linoleum from that. And the ancient Egyptians used linen to wrap their mummies. But during the 1800s, Belfast was made rich from linen. The American Civil War uh, was during the 1860s and there was an embargo against the American cotton coming into the UK. So linen proved to be a valuable substitute and one of the linen merchants who was made rich from linen was Henry Campbell. He lived in this estate on our left hand side, a hundred acre estate and when he died in 1888, although he was a very rich man, he had no wife or children that he was money to. So he's poor in that respect, but instead he said he wanted his money to be used to build a school and so Campbell College on our left hand side was opened in 1894 and there were 800 pupils or there at a grammar school and uh, some of the ex Campbellians, the old Campbellians include C.S. Lewis the writer and he was there for two months. Samuel Beckett was a teacher there during the 1920s. Gary Lightbody, frontman for Snow Patrol, went to school there. Mike Gibson, the football player, and Charlie Lawson, who plays Jim McDonald on Coronation Street. He was a pupil there also. Up to the left, we'll find Ormiston, which was the home of Sir Edward Harland, head of the shipyard, and his business partner, William Perry, bought the house on Sir Edward's death in 1895. He made a very large estate in this area, and this little house on our left hand side was once the gate lodge to that large estate. Now William Perry had two very clever nephews, one was called Thomas Andrews, he designed the Titanic, and Thomas's brother John was our second Prime Minister in Northern Ireland. was our second Prime Minister. The first Prime Minister was a man called Sir James Craig and he was part of the Dunville Whiskey Company family and uh, his brother was a gentleman called Vincent, Vincent Craig and he designed the lovely Belmont Tower on our left hand side 
Stop number seven's not too far away, folks. That's for the Belmont Road. the red hand of Ulster, or the right hand of God as it's known. This is where it features on the flags of Northern Ireland and County Tyrone. And on our right hand side we'll see Titanic Yardman 401. They show the workmen coming back from working all day building the Titanic or Boat 401 as it was known when it was being built. On the right hand side is the man himself, C.S. Lewis, of this mural on our right. On our left hand side we'll find these aquamarine coloured, uh, turquoise coloured fences. These are peace fences. There were 60 of these throughout Northern Ireland. And these separate the two communities. They separate the Nationalist Church Strand community on that side of the fence and the Lower New Arch Road community community on this side of the fence. They're there to keep the peace, but as you can see from the windows above the fences there, they still got security grills over them. And of course some of them have been broken by stones or bricks. You don't have to go very far. And this is why these huge walls are around the high courts there. Stop number 10, and we're stopping here at St George's Market. being left in shops, restaurants and pubs in Belfast and the, the way they stop these bombs from going off is they shut the whole town down at 6 o'clock. Shutters came down over the shops, barricades were closed, everybody had to leave the town centre and so the entertainment centre shifted from the city centre to this area we know now as the Golden Mile Dublin Road. Still home to many fine pubs, the points far on the left hand side but they'll give you a pint to get us for three pounds if you show your Belfast City Sightseeing Tour ticket. And they have music every night of the week. Also the Dirty Onion and uh, the Hard Bar tonight have free music as well as uh, many other places. And this is stop 14 for Shaftesbury Square where we're finding Lavery's Pub. Another fine girl there. The band the Basque area and the Catland district of Spain and uh, we're coming through to the Protestant part of West Belfast. Now I mentioned earlier that during the 1800s people flocked into West Belfast from the west of Ireland and this is why 90% of West Belfast is made up of Catholic people. It's in fact the, the opposite in East Belfast, 90% of East Belfast is made up of Protestant people. But we're in the Protestant part of West Belfast We'll be off the Shank Road very soon for our next stop. It's not what we're trying to do. Now during the 60s, as I say, the trouble started. And in 1969, because people were being burned out of their houses on both Protestant and Catholic sides, the British Army came to try and keep the peace. And they erected these gates here, these massive yellow gates, which were closed 24 hours a day. And they were closed because gangs were using these little streets to escape to each other, whatever community they came from, after carrying out shootings and bombings. And to try and stop more violence, the British Army put up this peace wall, the International Peace Wall, as we know it now. And 
it took place, a rural burned out buses. Now 67% of the violence that occurred during the Troubles happened within uh, 550 yards of this barrier. There were the 2 million signatures of people who visited Belfast to leave messages of peace and goodwill. As I say, this is only a wee temporary exhibition and they're already are, uh, putting it together and they're just completing it. There were 60 of these peace barriers throughout Northern Ireland, but this is the largest. It measures 1.2 kilometres in length, and it's over 8 metres tall. And there are plans to take down these 60 plus barriers throughout Northern Ireland by the year 2023. But it's doubtful that this will ever be removed, because it's return of the cancer. But whenever I was recovering in the hospital, I was sitting with a big bandage over my eye and I was just reading the paper, sitting on top of the bed. And this fella came in and he was so bad and he had a big red eye and uh, he looked like um, that guy uh, Keith Lemon, you know from the TV series. But his language was terrible. And I'm gonna say fish and chips instead of the F bomb. But he said all oh, he said is uh I'm in the F and hospital, he was talking to somebody in the phone. He says, of course I'm in the F and hospital, the F and Helmshire. Thank you, Keith William, of any orange hall in Ireland. And on the left hand side, built two years before the American Revolution, Clifton House, built in 1774. Originally it was called the Belfast Fur House, built by the Belfast Charitable Society. They were a society that born after the Ulster
Oh, what a city! Sloopy girls!
Two free, two free. Do you want to let Stuart try it? What about the others? Now he won. Now he went on fierce like a wimp. Oh, that's all right. All right. 
I just told him. I hope. I got a second on my lab. We dug.
to get it. Two very bad. Attention, please be this is gentlemen. I would like to advise you that we will short the bear line at block nine four. If you would like to thank the countries in the moment's bear line, it is the now in charge of the service to your speed. We don't fear compliance, we are passing us, we are part of the B and A guide, including priority board us and any coach passengers please join your vehicles of the car line. Could we ask the car passengers for us to day one and day two to please remain in their coordination area and set up all the lines to speed. Drivers are requested to close the side of engines and send advice to do so until the traffic in front of you begins to move away. You are reminded that smoking is not permitted on the car deck and the use of matches or any other unpainted lights is strictly prohibited. Once again, can we ask all food passengers and any day one and day two passengers to please remain in the seating area until a further announcement is made regarding the most package. We would like to thank you for choosing to see all this day and night. And the ritual is being replaced on the journey. Thank you. Do so, or until the traffic in front of you begins to move away. You are reminded that smoking is not permitted on the car deck, and the use of matches or any other naked light is strictly prohibited. Disembarkation of all foot passengers will be taking place shortly. By way of the passenger gangway situated on deck 7, adjacent to the guest services desk. However, could I ask all foot passengers to please remain seated until a further announcement is made. I would like to advise passengers that all items of baggage left in Belfast may be reclaimed before passing through security in the baggage reclaim area. Once again, we would like to thank you for choosing to sail with Stenoline and wish you a safe and pleasant onward journey. Thank you. Drivers and the passengers parked on deck 5 and deck 3, please rejoin your vehicles on the car deck now. Thank you.
ਠੀਕ ਹੋ